Hello YouTube, this is Intember doing another signature video tutorial. Going to be covering smudging on this one, but first I'd like to thank everyone who's helped me learn what I have. The list is actually pretty big, so just check out the description below and I have provided some links to the various forums I go to that people have helped me out on. So going to explain the process from the ground up. That includes some fundamentals which you might already have a grasp on, so I divided this video into sections with annotations on the screen. So if you'd like to skip a section, go ahead and use the annotations to get to the section you would like to know about. When I make smudge six, there is seven main sections I focus on. Canvas size, flow, shapes, composition, colors, values, and effects. Some general rules I follow is to keep the render no more than one half the canvas size, but typically I keep it down to one fourth. Also, I like to keep the render slightly off-center. You could always go with a typical canvas size like 400 by 150, but I like to imagine the smudge composition ahead of time. So I make the canvas size something that would allow for the flow to thrive in. Lastly, whatever you want your finished result to be, dimensions-wise, multiply that by two or more. So with that out of the way, let's get a render and open it in Photoshop. Keep in mind you should pick a render that has some flow to it. If you would like to know more about the flow, check out the next section of this video. Next, we will bring out the crop tool. You could do this by selecting it in the toolbox menu or by simply pressing C on your keyboard. Following the guidelines from earlier, we will be cropping the six space that we'll be using around the render, creating our canvas shape. Just expand the box using the edges. If necessary, you might want to zoom out a few times for this part, which is control and minus. Lastly, we are going to go to Image, Image Size, or Alt and Control and I. So now we have the width and height dimensions on the first boxes. They are currently linked together, so if you change the dimensions down on either of the boxes, the correlating box will change accordingly. Now just change the dimensions to double of what you want the original size to be. For this to work well, you never want to scale up from this menu, only down. So you're going to want to have a big render for this. So the next step would be to create a rough sketch of the flow you plan on using for your sig. A little trick I learned to figure out your flow is to go off the render's angles. Usually what you are looking for is a lot of curves like S and C shapes. Next you sketch it out based on those flow lines. When creating it, try to imagine movement and bring the movement back to the focal. I know it's always explained as water or wind, but I think that's the best way to describe it. So create a background layer. Any color will do. Now make a new layer and place it on top of your render. Using a vibrant color and your brush tool, start drawing the lines that you see on your render. Once you have done this, lower the opacity a bit on this brushing layer as well for your render. Now make another layer between your background layer and your render. Start sketching some flow. You might want to make multiple and from there choose one. Once you have chosen the flow that you will be going with, lock the layer. So something I commonly do is make a sort of a wall of smudge versus an environment of smudge. I think both can be good, but if you try to make an environment from the get-go and stick to it, it really helps with the depth and gives you that push from having a good smudge to an awesome smudge. Something you could consider doing is to make a floor for your render, to make the objects that have a perspective to them, and being selective before you add the detail. I have difficulties with this part, but you might not want to add detail in your entire SIG. You should be more selective and incorporate negative space. So to better explain composition, I have picked out two of my six much signatures that I feel explain this the best. Um, for example, this cave dweller one, which is kind of a landscape smudge. And as you can see, there's a floor and then there's these pillars that create depth because they go into the background over here and also there's use of negative space although the detail is kind of spammed all throughout the place but it works um, here in this one I was uh, really trying to be selective with my use of um, smudging shapes and just overall lights so here it's really dark to kind of create depth like it's receding in the background and then here we have just a few details and then the rest is just negative space 
I typically go through a quick tutorial on color in most of my tutorials, but it's really helpful. Also, using hue saturation layers as a clipping mask on your background and smudging layers can really help out with the process. So, I believe color is relatively new to being added to Photoshop. So, it's like a CS 3.0 and above feature, but in order to get to it, you just go to Window, Extensions, and then there it is, Color. And then you'll get a little window like this. But if you do not have it on your Photoshop, you can easily go to the website. I'll uh, provide the link in, this, in the description below. So, a good uh, color scheme I like to use is complementary. Because they really make each other pop. Like, you might want to use purple as your background color like a dark purple and then for your foreground color like the details and stuff you'll use yellow and then that will provide like interesting aesthetic and then if you don't want to use um, complementary this will help you pick any other color scheme that you might have in mind like analogous and then um, you can do various things like expand the color range of analogous uh, from here you can easily edit it to whatever you want like by looking at parts of your SIG like for example in this one currency is wearing a purple hat so I started with a purple color and then I picked compound which is like complementary but it has like a little bit of analogous attribute where like it selects colors around it and you don't have to go completely by all the swatches that are available here like for example right here I just double click it and then it picks it out here and then from here I can manipulate it because it's restricted in this box like if you move it it'll move everything else so I explained earlier how you can use hue saturation on a clipping mask to get a better feel for colors in your SIG um, you want to keep your smudging layers separate from each other whenever you introduce a new color and that way you can do things like this where you go hue saturation and then you go to layer create clipping mask and as you can see here there's also a shortcut for it um, alt control G and what this does for you is you can mess with the slider here to mess with the colors instantly and see how they interact with each other so you might have like an initial color scheme in mind that you picked out from color and then later decide that it doesn't look quite how you want it to or it isn't as pleasing as you thought it might be and then all you need to do is put a, a hue saturation layer on one of the smudging layers and then just slide it across the col color palette and see which one is more pleasing for you. The way I go about deciding where light will go is based off of the render. It isn't restricted to it but my main light source will be based off of the shading on the render. Also getting good at making light affect the surrounding objects helps a great deal. So again I have two signatures here that I feel ex are good for this section to explain lighting. Uh, this is the cave dweller one that I used earlier, uh, but as you can see, all the pillars and like these wall-like structures are affected by a global lighting. Like the light is coming from this direction, and you can see that these edges have like little highlights. And then in the center piece here, uh, we have like a jack-o'-lantern face, like but it's just like floating there, kind of like a ghost or something, and on the walls you can see that there's like little yellow highlights so that's kinda what you want to achieve when it comes to lighting and also on this render um, before I did it like any of the adjustments that's generally where the lights were coming from see like on this side you can see that it's kinda coming from this uh, top right area of the render and then to achieve the the dark highlight look 
I added a lot of uh, adjustment layers as clipping masks. Like this one is just brightness contrast, um, brightness like almost all the way down, contrast a little up. Then we added deep blue so it could blend in a little bit more to uh, the bluish hues that are in the background. And then this uh, helped out with the pink because it was pretty saturated. Then another shadow layer. And then, um, let's see, just going to re-reveal the light again. All right, cool. So what I did is, since this green is coming here, from here, um, I just tried to highlight the edges that it would be hitting. And then there was like some purple soft brushing that I did. So there's like a, some edges that are purple. And that's how you go about doing that. And just that's um, one way to go about lighting. The other thing is shading. And that's just making sure that there's some parts that look deep. And some parts where it's like more of a mid-tone. Um, So right here, it's like a deep black, and then here's more of a mid-tone. And so you just want to evenly distribute that. Shapes might be one of the least explained aspects of smudging. Like I always hear people mention it, but they never go into detail on shapes that they use to get a footing with this part of the smudging. So I have made a list of some shapes that I go to and how I go about making them. Pods slash beans swirls, wings, and waves. So right here I have a few examples of each already made and um, the first one that we're going to focus on is pods and every time whenever I see like a smudging signature tutorial it's always like oh this is the basics of smudging and then you, you, you know how to smudge you use push inwards and then you pull outwards and then you rotate it a bit and uh, you get different effects like that. Um, I actually found that in order to do shapes, you kind of have to um, brush with the smudge tool and then um, do things like, like here you see that there's like some transparency. You would grab from the dark spot and make it clean. And then like from the empty spot, use it to erase. And uh, the thing about pods is that you can make them in various ways. You can make them super long. Just keep on grabbing from the dark spot and using it to paint. And then refine it later. And you can use like different kinds of uh, brushing to create your shapes. Like down here I have soft brushing and then this is hard brushing. I find that using soft brushing is cool if you leave some soft brushing behind. And also it's useful because you get a bigger range of values. But you can make other like lighter values just by like um, d doing circle shapes like this. Then there you got a gray and then you can like use this gray as like a part, a small part inside the pod. So that's one way to make a pod is just like basically a long oval and then you can like make it heavier at the bottom and then like smaller at the top and just mess with the shape. And then another way to like make a pod which is pretty common is like to like make like a hook here Then make a hook here. So there you kind of have like an a open gap here. And that's like a pot also. So next um, would be swirls. And that's pr really easy, you know, you just like curve it. Um, I think the hardest part about this would be getting your um, coordination with your tablet and your screen down and that's just a matter of practice because you know like for me it was really hard because um, I always drew traditionally and then I never got like curves like all that down like 
um, I, I couldn't go like a, a long streak without having like a bunch of jitters in between it. Like this one has like some jitters in this area. Um, this one was fairly clean curve, but yeah, so that's just a matter of practice. But yeah, so this is a, also a very commonly used shape. Um, and it's just a matter of like making a curve and then refining it by using a smaller brush. And then you can like make a uh, spears and then you s switch it up by like adding um, lines that connect it. And then next is our wings, which I'm not good at. Um, it's just like a thick line into a sharp point. It usually looks better when you have other colors like within the the wing like this is a solid blue like a dark blue and then people would go in with like a lighter blue and then mix it and then um, just uh, using these kind of shapes to connect each other within the SIG and then waves you know like it's mostly a transitional tool like you might want to use a wave to connect two smudges together you can make them short you can make them longer So I would I would just like get a a, uh, a canvas and fill it out with some hard brushing and then just practice these shapes and then um, try to apply them in the SIG after you practice it quite a bit. So I'm gonna go over some effects that you can do to smudging. Um, in this one, it's just a, a black layer set to color dodge and then using some soft brushing, I uh, highlighted some parts with a uh, a neon color and uh, I think I used like a soft brush and then after I smudged it in a bit and here you can see what it did to it so that's one effect that you can do another effect is like sparkles and uh, the way you get about doing that is you get like a hard brush make sure opacity is 100, flow is 100 then you go to your brush settings um, in order to get there, you just go to window, then brush. And then on size jitter, put it up to like 100%. Turn on scattering, and then go to brush tip shape. And space it out enough so that there's like hardly any. And then I would like select a color on the canvas and then just... And maybe I might want like a smaller size. Then I'll just copy this. Go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And then that's one way to go about adding sparkles to your SIG. Another way is by adding noise. So using the paint bucket tool on a new layer. Um, just put black on there, go to filter, noise, add noise. Then I would go to filter, levels, and then I would clip it onto this noise layer by hitting control alt G. Then I would set this to lighten. Now that that's done, I would mess with the scaler until it's something like this. And then um, another one is to use clipping masks and a splatter brush. Um, doesn't seem like I have any Oh, yeah, I do. Okay.
So right there, put one down and then All right. So you're gonna wanna unselect the splatter so that it doesn't show up on the applied image. And a very easy way to make an applied image is to hit Control A, which selects the entire canvas, then Control Shift C, which copies all layers that are available within that selection, then Control V. There you got a uh, an applied image, and then I would um, use this applied image layer and clip it onto the splatter brushing layer that we just made. And then, again, it's Control-Alt-G. And then you can just move it slightly left. You can completely rotate it. So those are some effects that you can add to your smudging. Lastly, I have a speed smudge of one of my recent six, so you can see one being done completely. Definitely suggest watching it to get a better understanding. It is going to take a lot of practice. It took me about five months to get decent at the technique. There was even times where I was actually getting worse and was confused on how to get better. It took some reflection on my part to be aware on what I was doing wrong and perseverance to keep on going. This thing alone took 3 hours to make, and some can take up to 10, so be patient. So that just about covers all I can teach about smudging. I wish you all best of luck for your future attempts, and I hope this was useful.
If you liked my video and would like to check out more, feel free to subscribe to my channel or check out my website. Well, thanks for watching and catch you later, YouTube.